when you're low carb, keto, or carnivore, is there such a thing as a good ice cream? Maybe, we'll find out. And also, are sweets something you wanna even mess with when you're low carb? Good question. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another low carb, keto, carnivore chat. And today, the subject is ice cream. We, we really wonder if there's such a thing as a good ice cream. As you know, standard ice cream is good. It tastes good. Here's, here's some we have in our house right now. For It's not for us, but it's for somebody. And it's uh, organic, but it's uh, about 25 uh, net carbs per serving. And there's about four servings per pint, even though they, they, when it's organic, they always make it small, it's 14 ounces, but whatever. It's about 100 grams of uh, blood sugar level raising um, uh, sugar. So, but it tastes good and everybody loves it. It's addictive. You cannot just eat a serving. People, most people normally eat half a pint at least if they're sharing or they'll sit there and binge watch and they will, most people eat a whole pint, you know that. And then there's other ice creams like this uh, Halo Top, which we found out from the uh, managers at various supermarkets that they, those are most likely the, mo the top selling ice creams that aren't uh, Haagen-Dazs or Friendly's or Turkey Hill. They're the fastest selling um, healthy ice creams. And on paper, they look a lot better for people who are low carb, keto or carnivore than traditional ice cream as they're sweetened with stevia or erythritol and so on. But we, we, we did some investigation and um, those, those ice creams have about uh, maybe seven, seven to eight or nine net grams of carbs uh, per serving. And again, that's if you, if you adhere to the four ounce uh, uh, serving size. And, but if you're a pint gobbler, you're getting into dangerous territory because you're going to be eating 25 to 30 grams of sugar, which is just danger zone when it comes to a per sitting amount of sugar to eat. Uh, that will knock you out of ketosis. It'll probably make you hungry and spike your blood sugar and it'll screw everything up. So those ice creams are very tricky. If you eat two ounces or a couple spoonfuls and you could stick to that, then there's probably no harm. Otherwise, it's dangerous uh, territory. However, there is a new ice cream on the block, and this may spell good news for low-carb, keto, carnivore people, and it's called Rebel. Here's a, let's see if I can get focus. Finally, the ice cream you've been waiting for. High fat, keto friendly, all natural, and best of all, very low carb. For example, our vanilla bean has less than 7 grams of net carbs per pint. Compare that to leading low carb brands who have 2 to 3 times more net carbs. That means you won't have to plan a cheat day to eat creamy, delicious, real ice cream. And did we mention no added sugar? Rebel Ice Cream gets its natural, sugary sweetness from a blend of erythritol and monk fruit. But the best part is, Rebel Ice Cream tastes just like the traditional ice cream you know and crave because we left the fat right where it belongs, which is why it tastes so good. Just check out these reactions as people try Rebel ice cream for the first time. They have no idea that they're trying no sugar added, low carb ice cream. Is that true? Yeah. There's no sugar in this? Hello. <laughs> Yeah, it's way good. We're all just, it's like peanut butter, and I like, like, yeah. You can't tell that it doesn't have sugar. It's really rich. No way. Really? Yeah. It tastes like regular ice cream, though. Well, it's really good. You should buy it. <laughs> when I started a keto lifestyle, I couldn't believe the immediate results. I'd never felt better. Since I'd been making homemade ice cream for years, it was natural to try and keto buy my favorite recipes. I remember the time we tested out a batch on our kids, and they couldn't tell the difference. That's when I knew we were onto something big. And after a lot of tweaking, perfecting, and working with esteemed food scientists, we're finally ready to get Rebel Ice Cream to your hands. Rebel Ice Cream. This entire pint of ice cream is five net grams per pint. 
Uh, I think the mailman's here. Let me uh, pause my video for a minute. eBay is fun. Anyway, this is um, this is a low carb, full fat ice cream. And that's the big thing. Uh, a lot of a lot of low carb people nowadays. Um, well, if you're a really good low carb person, you, you know that fat isn't your enemy. It's it's the sugar. So while those Halo Tops have, it's like the skim milk version of ice cream. There's like hardly any fat in them, and because of that, um, it's there's a lot more sugar. Like skim milk, for instance, is fattening compared to heavy cream when you're, say, you're putting it in your coffee. Skim milk has so much extra sugar in it because of the way they process it. Um, to remove the fat, they have to add sugar. So it's just not good. Uh, but this is one, this is probably the only um, mass marketed ice cream, this Rebel. They, like I said, they had a Kickstarter account. And now, but here's the problem. So this is uh, like 150 grams per half cup and this is like real ice cream, quote unquote real is uh, two, you know, almost 250 calories. But calories don't mean crap. You, that's such old school thinking. Calories are crap if you're, if you're doing low carb. You don't worry about the calories. You worry about the sugar. The sugar, the sugar are, your, are your, uh, your, the numbers you really want to count. And protein, of course. If you eat too much protein, uh, that will turn to sugar if you don't burn it off before the end of the day. So this Rebel Ice Cream, let me, let me explain. It's not available in New Jersey, really. Here's a map. You can see it's just really not available in New Jersey. Uh, we found it in Easton, PA, over at a giant supermarket. They had about seven, seven or eight flavors. It was uh, six dollars a pint, which is about the going price for uh, newfangled ice cream. And this is sweetened uh, pretty much mostly with um, erythritol. And uh, I, I'm not really, I'm going to taste it real quick. I, I mean, tastes like ice cream with a 1% artificial sugar taste. But this is actually good. You could down this entire pint of ice cream binge watching. Shouldn't be binge watching to begin with. But, and it won't, it won't impact your blood sugar at all. Um, and hopefully it's not, because there's no real sugar in it, hopefully it doesn't uh, create that addictive, oh, one more scoop, one more scoop, one more scoop. I remember eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream 10 or 20 years ago and finishing the pint. You just couldn't stop eating it. Um, the few times I've tried this, as you can see, it's like almost still full. I just have a couple scoops and put it away. So maybe there's a hidden silver lining to the fact that there's no sugar in it. Uh, so keep an eye out. Oh, one other thing. I spoke to the owners of Rebel or their representatives and I said, how come this isn't available in New Jersey? Why do I have to drive to PA to get this ice cream? And they said, oh, well, in a few weeks, I'm saying this summer, uh, they, they hope to have this available at ShopRite supermarkets. So keep an eye out for this. Um, it could be a big um, game changer for people who really, who really have cracked the code on on being low carb and can get away from that ice water uh, halo top crap that's uh, knocking everybody's socks off. But I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna talk real quick about, so you know, just keep an eye out for it. Um, we're gonna talk real quick about the need for sweets. I, I have a theory that, um, you know, sweet foods are extremely addictive. They have this pleasure center type, um, reaction when you eat it and you get it's just so it's almost like a drug you you eat it you get all it's like bliss for you and especially when you eat real fat I mean I'm sorry real sugar uh, in the ice cream it, it's just truly a drug in our opinion even when you eat sweet things like bananas or pineapples those are um, high in, in sugar also and they and they spike your blood sugar and they mess mess with you have you noticed all those uh, those uh, native people that live in areas that have like pineapples and bananas, like the, the natives are always like kind of chubby. You, know, you ever wonder um, if that, that's the reason why? But anyway, I think that sweets in general are not a natural thing for human to eat, humans to eat. And I'm wondering if it's just best to avoid all sweet tastes and sensations overall because it may actually mess 
with your body chemistry and your appetite um, and especially the blood sugar if you're eating real sweets. So I'm wondering if this fake sweets, um, I know the original artificial sweeteners like, um, I guess, what was it? Not sorbitol, maybe it was uh, um, all those original ones, saccharin and uh, aspartame. They, they messed with your body really bad to think, tricking your body into thinking it got sugar and then you still had a reaction to it. I mean, I remember drinking diet soda a long time ago that diet Pepsi, diet Dr. Pepper were my favorites and diet Snapple, I would drink them by the gallon and I was always hungry and I was at the fattest point in my life when I drank those really awful artificial sweeteners. And they say, the people in the low carb keto carnivore uh, industry say that the erythritols and the xylitols of the world do not have the same detrimental effect that the uh, aspartames and other artificial sweeteners did. But I'm still on, on the fence about it. And I think it might be better to not treat uh, your food consumption as entertainment or pleasure. It should really just be like a gasoline stop when you pull your car into a gas station. It's, it's fuel for your body so you can go do other things. Um, eating should not be, in my opinion, a, like a pleasure center type thing where you're sitting there rolling your eyes in the back of your head because you put something in your mouth. That's that something's wrong with that. When I eat my burgers, yeah, they're good. I, I just eat them quick and I move on uh, and I'm doing something else. I don't want to have food on my mind pretty much ever until I, unless I'm really hungry and I know it's time to fuel my body, to feed the, the muscles and the organs and the brain cells and so on. So. I'm a little bit on the fence on whether ice cream should be and other uh, things that they're going to figure out how to make high fat and low carb or zero carb or zero sugar. Uh, I'm wondering if it's even worth eating it. I mean, is it going to mess with my my rhythm I'm in for, of just eating meat once a day and, and feeling great otherwise? Do I need to have that tongue pleasure? I don't know. It's something, something for you to think about and despite it not spiking your blood sugar, is it even worth putting in my mouth at all. So that's it for this uh, week's low carb keto carnivore chat. Keep uh, an eye out on in ShopRite this summer for this Rebel ice cream. You could try it. Um, if some people need need to have that, that pleasure or that reward for something via their mouth and they still haven't figured out how to crack that code, this is probably going to be your best bet. Take care.